Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santinetti, and we're here this morning, my wife and I, to share with you the Word of God, because the Word of God is the only thing we have that we can rely on. I know someone said amen to that. Well, with that, we're still looking at Listen to the King, and we're looking at chapter 4 of the book of Proverbs. We already did 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, 1 through 20 through 23. And so uh, we're here in verse 24, and we're looking at what the Word of God says in verse 24. And it says, Turn away from the crooked mouth and put perverse lips far from you. It's one thing to be crooked. Remember, when you're crooked, there is perversity. Remember that we were talking about yesterday that when we talk about sin, we have to understand that sin represents perversity. And so we term perverts <laughs> as people who commit <clears throat> excuse me, sexual sins, but in the eyes of God, we're a perverted nation. We have turned away from the commands of God. We have not obeyed his word. People have a problem with the word law and ordinances and principles and judgments. But understand, man didn't make this up. God gave it to us. Remember that God is a God of judgment. He's a judge. And his justice flows in the earth. Now understand that the power of the tongue is what moves and creates things among people. Imagine if we didn't have tongues, we couldn't communicate very well or say things <laughs> in a certain way that you just can't get it no other way. Sound is important. It's very important. They say that the average, a woman can speak about 16,000 words a day, a man about 15, but most people say it's about the same. You know, in a lifetime, they say we speak about 860 million words, 341,000. Wow, 860 million, 341,500 words in a lifetime. I mean, if you look back, <clears throat> or we look back, would we take some things back that we said? I, I, I say yes, absolutely. And you know what you learn most about talking? Marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to learn how to talk well? Well, just get married. But really, any people who are going to be together for a long time is bound to slip up. The tongue is a vital part of the body. As we know, it chews food as well as speech. Now, there are four common tastes, uh, we know, as we know, in the tongue, and that is sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. And yet, God gave us these things to represent words, to understand how words are. They can be sweet, they can be sour, they can be bitter, and they could be salty. Mm -hmm. Mm. The tongue has many nerves that help detect the and transmit taste singles to the brain. Think about that. The tongue and the brain connected together. The tongue and the heart connected together. Jesus said, as a man thinks in his heart that he is, the Proverbs is the one that actually is the author of that, but he quoted it because he is the Proverbs himself. And yet, you know what's interesting? God gave Solomon the, the wisdom that no man has on the earth, <clears throat> and he spoke great things, but he did stupid things. <laughs> the tongue is an amazing part of the body, and I know you agree with that. When you look at the tongue, just get online and look at the tongue, you'll see it's a great creation how God gave us the tongue. It's, it's connected to so many things. The mouth is powerful. I mean, just ask the Lord. The Lord spoke. <laughs> now, I want to share something with you about, because we're talking about wisdom. 
wisdom how to speak, wisdom on what to say, you know, choose the words we say. In Job, we have an interesting situation where when you go th- from chapter 1 all the way through chapter 37, there's a lot of things going on. And Job said a lot of things about God that were really good, if you read it. But then there are times he said things that actually darkened the counsel of God because he didn't know everything about God. And sometimes, no matter how righteous or how religious we are, we say good things about the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is good. He is merciful. Amen. But then we can say other things about the Lord that God says that's not right. And yet, you're religious. Now, I want to read to you three verses out of Job 38. Remember, from 1 through 37, you got a lot of dialogue going on, <laughs> a lot of words. Some with wisdom, some with man's reason. Now, in Job 38, verse 1 through 3, it says, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now your loins like a man, for I will demand of you an answer. Answer me. Now, what's interesting about this is that when you look at Job, here Job is standing and God comes and he says, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now, the word darken is interesting because, you know, uh, it's actually chashak, chashak, and it, it means to become dark, to grow dim. Notice that we can keep talking on and on and on, and after a while, things grow dim. We have to learn to control our mouths. I stand first in line. Like Paul said, I'm the worst of sinners. But it also means to be darkened and to become black. Now, I'm please, this is not black people. I just want you to understand that. So much stuff going on today, you know. Before you know, every time you mention the word black, it's people. No, this is not people. It simply means dark, very dark, like the black of the night. You've heard that before. It means something to be hidden. And yet Job, watch this, Job is speaking words without knowledge. Sometimes I ask a person, they'll say something, and I go, what does that word mean? They go, I don't know. And I go, then why did you speak it? Now watch this. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, and we're going to get there in a second, and said, who is this that darkens counsel? Now the word counsel here is interesting. Because it's talking about, actually, in the Hebrew, it takes you to trees. And you say trees, that's um, the land, that's the earth, that's. It talks about trees because trees are always associated with elders. Trees are associated with people who are the leaders of families. And now here's Job speaking to men. Remember, these were not just ordinary men. They had wisdom too. And now what he is saying about the Lord is not actually helping. It is darkening the counsel. He is not giving them counsel. For the great matter of the dispute between Job and his friends was concerning God's counsel. And watch this. And providence in affliction to Job. But watch this. Which Job had had endeavored to obscure and misrepresent and now the lord speaks to job out of the whirlwind now what's interesting about the whirlwind this is job now remember it means a tempest storm but it talks about the strong winds and turns of a storm or a person's rage that cause one to fear now when i read this a long time ago something really just impressed my mind and my heart and the Lord, I said, why did you have to speak to Lord, to, to, excuse me, why did you have to speak to Job, Lord, out of a whirlwind? It's because when you read from chapter 1 through 37, you're going to see that the dark counsel that Job gave his friends about God at times created a whirlwind in his own life, and he became angry. And the Lord broke through that whirlwind and spoke to him out of that whirlwind. Job, you created a whirlwind by the words that you have spoken in your own life. 
And sometimes we wonder, why is everything going so wrong? It's because your words have caused a whirlwind to develop in your life. And only God can speak through that and break that. And I love what he says. He says, gird yourself up like a man, because I'm going to demand an answer from you, and I want you to answer me. And God begins to question him about the creation at the end of Job's life, when, when God finishes with him. It was a period of time. It wasn't just one little sitting. God kept questioning him, and he had no answers. He had no wisdom to answer God. And when he finally, when God finally finished, the Bible says that Job says, I have heard of you. But now I see you and I repent in ashes. I repent of all the things that I said. How strong is the tongue that even in, Gen in Genesis chapter 10, which is really the table of the nations, this is what the Bible says. By these were the islands of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families in their in their nations. Think about it. How powerful it was that they were building something. They were listen, remember, they were gonna <laughs> the Tower of Babel means actually Babel means many languages. So the tongue we know is it's an amazing part of the body. Now, why is the world in trouble? Real simple. Evil words. Evil minds, words of pride. That's why we have war. Mm -hmm. That's why we have war. I love what Winston Churchill did when he was confronted in the time of Hitler with war. And it looks like the battle it really grew dim and grim. And it was very, very dark. And some of his counselors were saying we need to make a pack in other words with Hitler we don't want to get killed let's 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 go in and make a pack with him and they kept pressing the point and finally he slammed his fist on the desk from what I understand and he said you cannot negotiate with a tiger when your head is in its mouth we get ourselves in trouble so much because of words and then we try to negotiate our way out of the mouth of the tiger but that doesn't work. The only thing that brings us out is true repentance. And I repent today of words that I've spoken both to myself, my wife, forgive me, dear, for 31 years. 31 years. My children, I repent today. Remember that Satan is the father of lies. And he cannot tell the truth because the truth is not in him. Yet he can quote scripture. But the truth, the light of the truth is not in him. Look what James says in chapter 3, verse 14. But if you, are, if you harbor in your hearts bitter jealousy and selfish ambition, don't boast and attack the truth with lies. He even said in, in chapter 3, verse 1, going back, not many of you should become teachers, by uh, my brothers and sisters, since you know that we will receive a stricter judgment. But we all stumble in many ways. If someone does not stumble in speech, he is a perfect man able to bridle his whole body as well. When You know, let me share something very quickly about the book of James. And that is that the book of James is considered in the New Testament, the Proverbs of the New Testament. And when he's writing this, he is considered, watch this, he was the brother of Jesus Christ on the earth. He did not believe in Jesus until after the resurrection. And then this, this, this letter is written, and think about this for a moment. When he sat down to write this letter, I believe that he had his brother in mind and in his life. He remembered all the things Jesus said and he did. And when he says this, when I read this, we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in speech, <clears throat> he is a perfect man, able to bridle his whole body as well. That was Jesus. Jesus is the only one that was perfect in speech, never stumbled, and was able to keep his whole body in check. Listen to what James says here, that when we speak foolishly, foolishly <clears throat> our body also is involved, and before you know it, your body is doing evil things, all sorts of sinful words which proceed from it. The mouth, because it reveals the heart. Excuse me. <clears throat> it, 
It covers all the speaking faculties of our sinful exercises. Remember, every idle word will be judged. Every unprofitable word will be judged. In a general sense, in an awful judgment. And if not forgiven and repented, we will have to give an account. Now, I want to share something with you which is important. This word is a fire word. And we must learn to turn our heads away from it. Look what God tells Adam. Well, look what Adam says. And unto Adam he said, excuse me, God speaks to Adam. And, and unto Adam he said, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. The word eaten here is in connection with the mouth, with the tongue. He says, I told you not to eat from that tree, and now for the rest of your life, you will speak evil things. Man will speak evil things. Genesis 5.29 says, And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us. This is the father, Lamech. He, he called him Noah. He says, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Notice this now. The curse in Adam. Now here, Lamech brings forth Noah, and he says he's going to give us comfort in our work. The word work here is also an association with good or evil, that when we work our tongue for evil, we are working on a cursed ground. It represents fire. Psalms 119, 13 says, Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. It represents fire. It represents to be restrained, held back, kept in check. God, listen to what he's saying. Please keep me in check, God. Don't let my words boil to the point that I will speak prideful things. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. When a work is found to be an error, the work must be redone. An error that is made out of ignorance and an accident. One more verse of scripture. Ephesians 4.29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. This is a good prayer. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Watch yourself. Use wisdom in the words that you speak, and you will always build and not tear down. God bless you. Have a wonderful, spiritual day.